Hey guys, this is Aaron. Later this week, we have a video coming out from our 2018 base camp from Jim Leggett. Jim does an awesome job of creating unique visualizations from SketchUp models. One of the things he does is he combines his SketchUp model, digital model, with the handcrafted or handmade look of marker, watercolor kind of thing. So Jim walks through a couple different ways that he achieves this, and you'll see more of that in the video. What I wanted to touch on is some things that he didn't necessarily get into a whole lot of, and that's prepping the view of your SketchUp model for export to create those handmade composite, I guess you'd call it. But uh, cool visualizations, check out that video. For now, let me give you a couple skills. So here I have a SketchUp model, and I'm gonna say that I wanna take this and I want to print it out and then paint over it or color over it with markers to make it, give it that a, a unique feel, a hand-drawn look on top of a SketchUp model. So there's a couple different ways to export this. The first, and Jim covers this, is to export this image as it is right now. So to just print this out as it is and then take vellum or something like that and throw it over the top and then just trace the parts that are important and kind of use it as a guide to create your own hand drawing of this building. That's an option. So we're pretty much done there. Nice bold colors, bright colors, not a bunch of textures, that kind of thing. And uh, I could print this out and then draw on top of it. But let's say we want to go a little deeper than that. Let's say that we want to create a few new styles. I'm going to do a couple of them. And like I said, these are things that Jim will talk about more. One is I want to create a style that I can just export just line work. So I end up with line work that I can do color the kind of color by number or color by not number since there won't be numbers there but put the colors in on top that's one style we'll look at the other is if I want to take this and just kind of come out with a real faint color so just kind of a background reference image that I could draw on top of so we're going to look at both of those I'm not going to play too much with line types or anything like that. We've talked about that before. Line styles are up to you if you want sketchy lines or anything like that. I'm going to just use the existing lines as they are and come up with different styles for export for that hand compositing. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my in-model uh, styles and I'm going to right-click and make a copy of this default style right now. Okay, so right now we have three copies, all the same style. I'm going to click on the second one and we're going to change this one. This is going to be the easy one. I'm going to print out the uh, outlines only. So what do I want this to look like with just outlines? I'm going to do that by, uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to turn my axes off. I don't need that there. So update that style. I don't need an axes. Um, and I'm going to real simply go to this style right here called hidden line. And what that's going to do is get rid of all my colors. You can see a couple things are happening. I still do have my gradient, my background, and I have kind of this, I don't know what this would be called, a subtle tan, a windswept beach type color. Anyhow, it's not white. So what I'm really looking for is kind of a white color. So I'm gonna do a couple changes here. I'm gonna edit the style, and I'm gonna click on the middle button right here, this middle tab, which will give me access to the sky and the background color. So I'm gonna turn the sky off. I don't need this gradient for this printout. Sky's gone. And now to get rid of this background color, I can click right here where it says background. And then on my colors, how, however I want to pick them, I'm gonna go choose a white. So I'm just gonna go to stark white. There we go. And that's what I wanna print out. So I wanna print this out and then I can just use my markers to color it in and create a hand drawn, hand sketched look. That's good. I'm gonna go back to select and I'm gonna say update that style. So now I can actually flip between these two styles. You will notice with this style, one of the things I lose is, look at my flowers. Because my flowers were softened all the way, they don't have an outline or profile to show there, so I will lose those, they'll go away. Not something bad, just something to notice. Not bad like, look at this guy, he looks like he's in trouble. That, that might be bad, I'm not sure what's going on there. All right, so I'm gonna go to the third one. And this one, I wanna print it out, I want, I want the exact colors that are here. I'm gonna get rid of my axes again. I want the exact colors that are here, but what I want to do is just tone them all down. I want a nice gray. Um, I want it to just kind of all blend into the page so my bright colors are what I put over the top. To do that, I'm going to place a watermark on top. So I come in here to watermark. What I want to actually put in for a watermark is just gray. It's just a gray swatch that I can put over the whole thing. I don't happen to on hand have a gray 
image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a screenshot of this little section of the screen. So that just became a screenshot on my desktop. And what I can do right now is I can just load that in as a watermark. Here's my screenshot. Open. And there we go. That gray blob gets laid on top. And I want it to overlay, not be in the background. And now this is where I can actually choose how grayed out do I want this to be. Do I want it to be like almost nothing can be seen? Do I want a little bit of color? That's up to me with this. I can say I'm going to go to right about here. And I'm going to hit next. So something you notice is the aspect ratio of that thumbnail I just did, the little screenshot I just did, is not quite the same size as my image. Stretched will only stretch one direction, in this case vertically, and then stop. So what I'm going to do instead is hit positioned. I'm going to position it in the middle, and then I'm just going to stretch it out till it fills the whole screen. And click finish. So there, if I update that, this is my grayed out version of this model. If I want to, I can actually always come back and edit that because I can double click on the style. I can hit edit. I can click the watermark, double click the watermark, and then I can, here's where I can actually do things like right now, just change how much. So if I go print this out and the colors are still too bold, I can always come back in here and maybe crank that up a little more even to get a little less. You know what I'm talking about. So if I look at that now, in this one model, I have three different ways I can print that out for post-visualization. So hopefully that helps you out, and hopefully you come back on Friday and watch Jim Leggett's presentation. It is really cool, and if you ever had a need to take your images or your files you created and add that something special, that something to, to make it a little more personal, his workflow is really cool. And it might be something that set your work apart from somebody else's. So hopefully you like that. If so, give us a like down below and subscribe. That way you'll know when Jim's video comes out on Friday and when the next Skill Builder comes out next week. And most importantly, please comment. Let us know what you thought. If you have other ideas for Skill Builders, we like making these videos, but we like them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.